Hey everybody, this is Bruce with Lebowski Studio. In this video, I'm going to be going over my new uh, redesigned paint box tabletop easel. I did a video on this recently and since that time have been improving upon it and I think I've come up with a really great design and uh, we're going to get into it. So thanks for joining me. Okay, first off, uh, it is the same size as the box in the video I created before. Uh, key differences on this box are the uh, panel canvas support area, how it attaches to the tripod, and I've moved the feet so that as a left-handed painter, when it goes on the table like this, the feet are in the front. So if you lean on it, it won't tip to one side or the other. Whereas before, I had a middle foot in the front. So now we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how it attaches to the tripod, all that good stuff. And we'll go from there and open it up, check out other features. Just want to also point out that even though I've built this for a left-handed painter, where the palette pulls out to the left, the box can also be designed to pull out to the right for right-handed painters. That's not a big deal. Also, the price of the box and uh, dimensions and that sort of thing will be in the description box in the video. And now uh, we'll get into the tripod functions. Okay, now the box will attach to pretty much any lightweight tripod. I have a couple laying around the studio for different purposes. And this is super light. While I love my uh, Gorilla Box, it's pretty heavy uh, with all the gear in there. Uh, that part's not too terrible. Mostly it's the thickness of the box, the bulkiness of it, uh, and the tripod's really heavy for the uh, Gorilla Box because it needs to support that weight of the box. So I like uh, this concept for uh, having a more lightweight system. And uh, so, yeah. I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll close in here and we'll start uh, putting the box uh, onto the tripod. Okay, now, uh, of course, here's the tripod. Normally you'd have it facing towards you this way with the two legs uh, spread out front. But for the purpose of this clip of the video, I'm going to turn it almost completely around so you can see how I put the box on. Give you some idea how the hooks work. And Here's your box, you've arrived at the scene, all your gear's inside, you just unpacked your backpack, and you just put it on, pull your pallet out, pull your support for your panel or canvas, and you are up and running. Okay, now that we have the uh, box on the tripod, I want to show you uh, something here. I have a stop block, I call it, put in here, right there, to prevent this from kicking forward. Even though when this is pushed in a little bit, that would prevent that. It really gives a stable uh, support for your panel here. Now, it actually has a little, let me get side, see if you can see. There's two different levels there. Now, where I have it set up on the inside, I wanted to show you that first. That would be where you have it for the tabletop easel because if you had it up here, I have found when it's further away from the wall of the box, while it's useful for the tripod uh, when you're painting outdoors standing up, you see how angled it is. I like to have it just a little bit more upright. So it works really well. I've tried it out. And uh, now I'm going to uh, put the camera back on the tripod and show you how this attaches. Okay, I've taken it off the tripod for this part, which is make it a little easier to show you how the support for your panel or canvas fits onto this. It is, uh, see if you can see that. Just a bolt with a wing nut, a washer that's bigger than the gap in the uh, board there. This drops down like that. And what you do, 
you take your board, drop that in the hole that's provided, and it slides right on. And then you just tighten up. You gotta just barely touch the head of the bolt in the back to keep it in place a little bit, and there you go. Now you can adjust it slightly. Way easier uh, mechanism for supporting a panel. Now, you want to be careful the ratio, like if this is too high up and you go to do a bigger panel here, sorry I had to go get one, you want to be careful that you see that it's almost halfway there, so if you were painting up top here, it, I mean I'm pushing pretty hard and it's still not coming off that support ledge, but you could potentially have it too high and it could tip that way. So you want to watch for that and place your support bar accordingly. And then once all your gears in here, all your paint tubes, which I'll show you in a moment, what I, what I include in my kit, uh, it's very stable. It's only wobbling because this card table that I'm using in the studio is on a little bit, the legs are a little wobbly. So I don't have a, like a dining room table or anything here in the, in the studio. So uh, yeah, works great. And this you only be using uh, when it's on the tripod, which I'll show you next. Okay, just want to show you now the biggest size the system can accommodate comfortably. And depending on how high this part of your tripod goes, matter of fact, I believe I pushed mine down a little bit. I'm going to crank that back up. To get it to its tallest capacity, which is there. Now I'm going to take a 16 by 20, and you can see fits it fine. Matter of fact, I could raise this up a little bit, tighten, put this on there, and I'm good to go. And you want this middle of your canvas panel support to be in line with your tripod shaft there and what you'll need when using this you'll have to get a bigger bungee cord this little one comes with the purchase of your box and I've bent out the bungee a little bit so when it's over a panel it's not like a super sharp curve and then poking into your panel it's almost like an L shape but not quite you'll need to do that with your bigger bungee cord and get a bungee cord a little bit longer than you think you need because you can always take up the slack with tying a, a little loose knot and that gives you some flexibility so you don't have to have multiple uh, bungee cords of course and you can also take a longer one bend it in half and then a loose knot in the middle like that rather than keep knotting like this way so that works great and You'll, of course, uh, working larger, typically you have a larger surface area to mix your paint, but you'll just have to clean the palette more often. Uh, but yeah, it works. I've done it before in New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, you can even, with putting this back down this way, now you have 20 high and it just fits under my tripod right there. And then I can put my bungee cord on. Sometimes you can even, Bend your head up like this, and that holds it in place, but I would trust the bungee better. So now we'll put the smallest panel that's available on there. Okay, a lot of times I paint on 6 by 8s out in the field, so now we'll put a 6 by 8 on there, and I'm going to raise this up to its highest level. And I'll be taking the uh, camera off the tripod there and showing you some details of this setup in a minute, because I have it in a different setting at the stop block I mentioned before. Put your 6 by 8 there and then you bungee that supplied I've knotted it up just a couple times looped it in the part back here on my tripod and then I just go over the top of the panel and go one step higher here and there we go and that holds it quite secure uh, securely and a very nice stable work surface. Now I'm going to take the, the camera off the tripod and kind of pan around how it looks. Okay, here we go. 
Now the position on the stop block that I mentioned is right there. That's where I had it before, but I really want it a little angled back. So you can see how it's sitting on the furthest away point because that will create more of an angle this way and the panels this way. So when it's bungeed on, it kind of holds the panel right in there. So it can't really flip off this way. And you can see on my tripod, I have a handle with some holes in it conveniently. And that's what I loop my bungee cord to. Got a couple knots in there. Put as many as you need. And you can see how I've bent. You can even bend it a little more. It'll still hold the panel on there, but it's not touching the surface of the panel. So that's important, so you don't want to obviously scratch paint, create grooves in your panel or holes in your canvas. And that's what we have. Now I'm going to show you what kind of gear can fit in here. Okay, here's what uh, fits in that uh, box that I've designed. This is what I carry when I go out and paint. Uh, I have 14 tubes of paint. Let's see, one, two, three, four of them are smaller tubes, these ones here. The rest are 37 milliliter, which is a common size. Sometimes they're 40, but obviously you may not use this many colors. I like to carry multiple uh, primary tones. Depending on what I'm going to paint, I may not use all these. I may use uh, a lot of them. I like to have that option when I get to the site. Then I have an array of uh, palette knives here. My little tool for scratching out. A uh, little S-hook if I don't want to put the turpentine uh, jar thing uh, on the box. I can hang it off the box. My scraper. And the best part is I redesigned the box to be a little bit deeper to accept these common smaller bottles of medium linseed oil. You can even get turpentine in this size. Uh, so these fit in the box. I'm going to pack up the box and show you what it looks like. I also want to mention that I personally carry my uh, longer handle brushes um, when I go out painting, but in the past I've used the smaller gr um, Gorilla Painter brushes, so these would fit in the box. This particular one is not a Gorilla Box Painter brush, but it's similar in length. I think it's 8 or 9 inches, so you could have a little collection of those in your box as well. Just put a little stick, a little thin... Uh, dowel a little bit longer than your longest brush so that when you have it in the box and it's jostling around it won't hit the bristles very important but you know then put a little rubber band around them or something but uh yeah it can fit brushes too that's up to you to decide what kind of gear you want in there okay now i'm going to pack up the box okay now this uh this is how i would be uh setting up outside this is my little rag once i rinse and turfs access to my paints if i need them and I have this little slot in this palette here so that I can slide it in a little bit so it's not way out here and you're pressing out on this direction trying to keep everything more central. <clears throat> so you can put your paper towels there or whatever and you could get that chain that goes on Gorilla Box and probably it will probably fit on this to hold paper towels if you wanted but I just use a rag, a, a cotton towel. I like that better. And uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. Brushes over here uh, for the few that might have in use. And then of course my two little jars of medium that I showed you would be like in my backpack because I would put a little in here if I, or if I had a two cup using medium, a little bit of terps to work with during the painting process before I'd like rinse. So that's the box. What's nice is about uh, putting those little jars of medium and such in the box is that they're a perfect fit for being one on top of the other. So it's a nice little kind of way to maximize your space in your box.
Okay, this concludes my uh, video on my new and improved paint bot slash tabletop easel. I think it's a great design with the modifications I've made since my original style. And uh, I do take payment by PayPal or you can send a check. I'll have the uh, cost information and of course, like I said, the details on size of the bots uh, down below in the description box and also try to somehow put some uh, still images of the box for dimensions, that sort of thing, in the video. See if I can do that for you. And uh, unfortunately, I can only do United States sales right now. No out of the country uh, uh, shipping or anything like that. So there will be shipping on top of the cost, of course. And uh, I think it's a really great idea. And if you can't use the box yourself, if you know an artist that might be interested, please share the video or let them know about my channel so they can check out the video. And uh, until the next time we meet, thank you very much. And just uh, contact me for uh, ordering through the email I'll provide in the description. Oh, and uh, depending on how many orders I have at one time, I typically can have them built and shipped out within two weeks. So something to keep in mind. Okay, thanks. Bye.